Okay, so this video is going to be uh, sort of a, a marathon uh, session of uh, just me modeling the building. And what it's attempting to do is show you all of the steps in sequence and give you some timestamps so that if you think you're missing something uh, up to this point, uh, based on the list that is posted to uh, AE Studio currently, um, it, will, it will try and go over all of these steps. So the first step is to make sure we're working in the site file. So if you don't remember how to do that, it's on Canvas. You can download the site, Site920. And I'm going to open it up here. And we're immediately put into like a northwest uh, corner perspective. I'm actually going to change this. Uh, you can always change your views up here, you can change them at the bottom, but if you have a set view you want to change to, I go down to set view. And I've given you two name to use, the corner uh, perspective, which we're currently in, and the corner parallel. Um, I'm going to draw in a parallel mode here. I'm actually going to get out of this perspectival view, and I'm going to go to a top view, and I'm double-clicking the name uh, of the viewport, and I'm going to double-click into the top view. So I don't really need to be too precise here. What I'm uh, trying to do is uh, I'm actually drawing on the site. And um, I'm I know I'm drawing on the site because they set the seaplane for you uh, as the top of this. Um, this is actually the world origin here at the, the sort of intersection of the extended curves. And it's on the top of the lot. So you should be able to draw on the lot with, uh, with relative ease. Now this is a, a rough sketch that I made. Um, the, the lot is about 160 by 120. I put a, a couple setbacks there. And it's uh, essentially a, a, a building with a bit of a curve in it on the bottom that goes up to full first story. And then the second story, uh, which contains uh, it, it's sort of the grouping of all of these other elements. Uh, namely, there are some circulation um, stairwells on, on the, the northwest and the, no and the southwest corners of the building with the, with the sort of circulation hallway at the end, and this will be some glass with some louvers on it, I think. Um, the, the building itself is an auditorium. We don't need to get into that level of detail, uh, but I just wanted to, to show here sort of, you know, I'm blocking out an area for, for pro quote unquote program to happen with some back of the house functions. Um, how do you get into the building is either through a courtyard on the north side, which is going to either be shaded, um, it's, it's probably going to be shaded halfway here. So wherever this box is, this is going to be a shaded courtyard. And then uh, there's a lobby that it connects to. So if you just need to get to the park, you can close down the lobby and just enter into the courtyard. Uh, and there's probably going to be a back entrance here as well. Um, so that if uh, uh, you want to get to the the park on the roof, which is one of the programmatic requirements. Um, you can go up these stairs or these elevators here. Um, and you can also get out probably on the roof here. Um, so these are, are uh, fire stairs that are diagonal, which is a good rule of thumb. Um, I have my cooling towers here um, at the back of the building. Uh, and you'll see as this develops, these are actually at the bottom floor. And I'm just going to denote sort of generally um, how big they are. Um, I have some loading and trash at the back. This is a little void that's cut in the first floor. Um, and you can also get into the lobby from, from Congress, which is sort of the main entrance um, to, this, to this lobby, which will um, have some glass which faces uh, the Capitol. So you'll always sort of see the top of the Capitol, at least in the lobby. Okay, let's go ahead and start modeling this. Um, I'm just going to use uh, the rectangle tool. Uh, so rectangle is a command. And I'm going to be fairly imprecise with this. And I know I want a little bit of a setback here, um, a little bit of a setback on the front. Um, and then I'm actually going to clone this. So I'm Control C. I'm using Control C and Control V. And you can see that it pasted. I'm going to select away, and there's actually two curves here. So when I select this, it's a little bit hard to see that it's pink. But you can see that I, I um, uh, I can choose which one. It doesn't really matter at this point, but I'm going to select that one. And then I'm going to inclusively select what are called these control points. Um, now I'm going to uh, use the gumball to go negative 10 feet with these control points. Actually, let's go negative 12 feet. And this will be um, sort of an overhang. Um, now, if you look at the drawing here, uh, I want this to extend out. 
Uh, but because we're pretty close to the, the edge of the lot, what I'm going to do actually is um, select these control points and move it back. And I'm going to do, let's say, negative five feet. And so I get a little bit of architectural complexity happening here. And um, I'm going to add a little bit more with a command called fill it. And I'm going to select the subcommand here by typing in the, the underlined um, hotkey, which is R for radius. It's already 20, but I'll, I'll put in 20 again. And I'm going to fill it these two corners. And that's how I get a, an arc. And if you have your snaps on, you can actually um, uh, locate its center by hovering over the, the center. You can see that that's, that's that radius, right? That's, that's 20 feet. And you can see on the bottom where it's 16, 17, 20, 20 feet. Uh, anyways, that's how the fillet tool works. Uh, so let's start adding some other elements here. And I know a lot of these lines might overlap. Um, I'm going to add a circulation core at the back and I want it to overlap and I actually want it to overlap five feet again. So again, I'm going to select a rectangle. Uh, let's move it back to the place, uh, to the edge and let's move it five feet in the positive direction. Uh, this isn't going to matter so much, I don't think, uh, but it's just something that I like to um, you know, there's some sort of architectural symmetry going on. Let's go ahead and add some fire stairs here. So I'm going to type 15 feet. Um, and I don't want to go that direction. Actually, um, let's type, let's make this 30 feet. And this will be a minimum, right? So I know these stairs will be more grand, but, but in terms of the diagram of my building, I know this is what I want. And then I'm going to type 15 feet as well. And we'll use the move command to bring this back down. So I'm going to copy this. And copying, you can copy from any point to another point. But right here, I'm going to copy from the um, uh, this point, the bottom, the southeast corner of the fire stairs to the southeast corner of the building. And so I've copied this um, as well. This looks a little bit out of proportion right now. I probably want to give it a little bit more um, uh, dimensionality to it. And again, going back to my drawing, let's see what else we have here. We have a lobby, and the lobby is going to cover uh, basically this area. And I have a courtyard, which actually goes the whole building. Now you can see that this building in the drawing is set back, and I forgot to do that, so let's let's take these back maybe 30 feet. That's probably too much, so I'll control Z and let's do maybe 20 feet. And so I can put my cooling towers right, right here and I can have that little uh, bit of exterior courtyard that I want. So you can see the, the, the drawing is not exactly the same. Um, it's not perfect, but uh, if I want to figure out, oops, I don't need to run this tool. Um, how long this dimension is, what I like to do is just run the line command and you can see at the bottom left, this is 30, uh, 32 feet. Um, so what I'm gonna do is put in uh, three elevators here. And so I need to expand this a little bit more because I need about 15 feet for the, the edge of the, uh, um, the stairwell here. So I'll go negative 15 feet and let's move that. So this is my lobby, this is my courtyard. I have, uh, let's move this over. I can put that there. And now I'm gonna draw a rectangle that's 10 feet by 10 feet. Um, I can actually put some X's here so I know that these are elevators and I can try and join them. It's not gonna do anything, so I'm gonna group them. So grouping them, uh, what it does is if you go to the object properties, you can see it's three curves grouped and I can always ungroup them. They're, they're sort of individualized geometries. Move that over and I'll copy it. So now I have three, uh, whoops. I have three, um, three elevators. And I actually, uh, this is fine. Um, actually, we'll, we'll move it over. 
Uh, by the way, I, I right click a lot in Rhino, so I know it doesn't look like I'm doing much, and a lot of people always want to go up here and run the, run each command, but if, uh, if you want to run the command a second time, you can actually select whatever you want it to do. Um, so for instance, I want to run the move command again. I know it's the last command I ran, command I ran and so I'll just right click and now I can run the, the move command again. So anyways, this is kind of nice. Um, I'll have a door here and a door here and probably a door to get out um, over there. So I have sort of three exits. Um, and then I'll have a door here to get into the lobby and also a door to get um, into the courtyard, but we don't really need to focus on that right now. Uh, so this is essentially it for the circulation of my building, right? I've, I've transferred the, this diagram um, into a, uh, a, a digital diagram. Uh, there's one more thing which I need to do here, which is draw a uh, 20 foot by 50 foot rectangle. And this is going to be my loading and trash zone. Um, I didn't draw that correctly, so I just used the gumball to rotate. And now I can sort of see uh, that this will be outside, this will be inside. Um, and I'll have some, uh, you know, uh, maybe a freight elevator will go uh, right here or right here. Uh, this is kind of a dead zone, which is a, a little bit unfortunate, but but that's fine for for right now and for for this class. Um, I think we can we can deal with it. Uh, but I'll probably put a, a freight elevator right here. Um, I also need a, three elevators in the lobby, so I'm going to copy this over, uh, rotate them, and move them over here. Um, and maybe they won't do that. Maybe they'll go over here. And then I can, you know, sort of move this. Use my smart track. To get that to line up. So that's where you would sort of enter. Um, there's the sort of standing lobby or whatever. And there's going to be a platform above this. Um, for the elevators to get out and, and uh, the stairwell. I probably don't need this stairwell to be so big, but for right now it's just a diagram, so, so that's okay. Um, so we're good. Um, I'll make one more um, rectangle. And this was a little bit bigger, I think. This is 40 feet, so I can actually move this 10 feet. And that allows me to, to get a freight elevator in here. Right, so that's essentially the, the diagram of my building. Now, I haven't been managing my layers very well, uh, but everything's on the zero, zero layers, so I can go to an entourage layer, I could try this again, I could redraw it, right? I could manipulate elements, I could make a sub-layer um, and put this as, you know, the first iteration. Uh, but for right now, we're just gonna stick with this. So let's go to a 3D view, and there's a couple things that I want to do. I want to take some of these elements and, and move them up and start making um, um, some built form out of it. Um, I know I want to take this curve and extrude it and make a box out of it so that the, there's going to be a box on top of it. Um, I'm going to use a command here called extrude curve, and I'm going to make sure my solid is turned on, and now I'm going to give it a dimension of 20 feet because I know that the first floor of my building um, sort of needs to be... Uh, 20 feet tall, right? Um, now you can see all of the curves disappear. This is where a wireframe is uh, particularly nice uh, because you can see all of those curves through your building. Let's go back to a shaded mode though and I'm going to move this up 20 feet. And now I'm going to extrude this curve um, 45 feet. I actually want that to be a little bit taller. It looks a little bit proportionally weird. So I'm going to extrude curve and let's make it 65 feet. So that will include basically some walls that go up to it and, and I'll have a canopy that won't necessarily be seen from, from the ground floor. Uh, what I'm anticipating is that this will be a, a sort of homogeneous shading element with some, some penetrations in it. Um, and then this will be uh, you know a, a singular um, sort of entrance and another singular sort of entrance. I'm actually gonna move this down um, five feet, it's looking a little bit too tall, but that doesn't mean that my lobby and my first floor don't have to be um, uh, 20 feet. I'm going to use a command called scale1d, 
and I'm clicking the bottom and clicking the top and now I'm going to type a dimension make that 15 feet and I'll move this down negative 5 feet. So this is looking a little bit um, a little bit better I think um, proportionally. You can see that that curve is still there at 20 feet and I'm actually going to keep it there so that I know that um, I have a little bit of structural plenum or whatever I need um, below that. Uh, so what else is there to do? Let's go to a top view. Let's change this to a, a wireframe. That's the first one. And I'm going to make some uh, boxes here. Uh, and I'm going to use the box command. I'm going to start in this view. Actually, let's let's go to a multi-view. multi, multi view. And I'm going to draw in the, the corners and go all the way to the top of my building. Now, this is a little bit strange, um, and I'll probably change this later on, but I, I actually kind of like what that's doing there, right? Where it's this, this fillet that's sort of, um, you know, obstructed by this thing, and there will be a nice little entrance here. So I'm going to keep it for right now. I might change it later. I might change it in Revit. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, let's keep it um, for right now. Um, so you can see my cursor over here is actually not where I want it to be. I want to select that bottom corner, right? Uh, now, if you have something highlighted and there's some geometry in the way, it actually wants to snap to the things that you have highlighted. So I can move it there uh, from that point to this point, and you can see that it's wanting to snap to the right location. I actually want this to probably move back a little bit. I don't want it to be um, visible. So I'll, I'll just move this um, all the way back. And so this is going to be a hallway, and you'll get to the stair stairwell through a, through a door like that, and there will probably be a door at the bottom there as well. And I think that works a little bit better for the building. I'm going to make some boxes out of these as well. They're 10 by 10, and I'm just going all the way to the roof for the time being. And I'm going to copy this, and actually before I do that, I'm going to start making some layers. So I'm going to call this massing. I'm going to make a new sub-layer. And I'm going to make a new sublayer called elevators. And I'll make a new sublayer um, called circulation. Now, circulation is like hallways and, and, and more important hallways um, for, for my project. Um, I'm going to give these a couple different colors as well. So let's give fire stairs orange. Let's give ele elevators uh, like a cyan color, and we'll give, s actually, let's give uh, circulation a cyan color, and we can give our elevators, uh, maybe like a blue. Yeah, that's probably fine. And I'm going to, uh, I'm selecting the geometry, and to change its layer, I can open up the layer tab here and change that to elevators and now I'm going to copy the, those extrusions over. And again you can see I'm not highlighting the uh, the right location um, so I'm going to go over here and, and highlight it. Um, I can now take, take these objects and by the way on this list uh, if it's the first one you can actually right click if it's the second one you'll have to um, um, to move down or use the arrows and we'll copy this from here to here. So I have two elevator cores. Uh, let's change this to the fire stair layer and I'll copy this over making a freight elevator. And you can see I put it in the wrong place. It's somewhere sort of lost. So I'm going to run the copy command again. It's actually copying in the right place. Oops, and I didn't, I just didn't highlight the right thing. Uh, this I probably drew um, in the wrong location, the freight elevator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use move, but I'm going to restrict it in the vertical dimension. So I know that the top of that will be at the top of that. Uh, and now it's also the wrong scale, so I'm going to use scale 1D. And if I'm unsure as to what it's clicking, um, I can either look over here, I can look down at the bottom, and you can see this goes between like 80 and 
uh, 10 feet, and I want it to be 10 feet, so that's the right one, and I'll scale it to the right dimension. So what about this big void over here, or and this big solid? Um, I'm going to make these boxes um, in the same manner. But uh, I want to keep this sort of uh, this sort of shell, um, and I want it to wrap all of these elements in the building. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a couple commands in sequence. Um, first, I'm going to use isolate. I'm also going to turn my context off, so I'm just modeling with this. Um, and then I'm going to use a command called explode. And what this does is now, instead of a single solid poly surface, I have six surfaces, so I can click away. Um, I'm going to select all of the surfaces that sort of make up this shell, and I'm going to join them. And I'm going to delete the top and the bottom because I don't need those right now. I'll redraw the canopy later. And if I type show, uh, let's keep the context off. It's a little bit easier to, um, to see what's going on. You see there's a little bit of, of uh, weirdness happening, happening with, with this sort of thing. I would just take this shell and scale it up by uh, 1.01. Uh, so it's 101%. And there you can see um, that it... Um, it doesn't overlap anymore, and I'll show you a method later. So if you if you do want to see these um, elements, how to um, how to change them, either the materiality or extract um, the wireframe. Now this is a little bit different. This is a lobby which will sort of which which will have walls and it will have a roof. So we're going to keep this. I'm going to put this on a new layer. Uh, let's make this a new sub layer. We call it lobby, and put it on a red layer and move it to that layer so now you can see everything sort of interacting right it's not the the sexiest of diagrams but that's that's fine um, i'm going to use a command called boolean difference here i'm going to subtract from the lobby and i'm going to start subtract a few things i'm going to subtract the uh the stairwell and i'm going to also subtract these three elevators and so now that's looking a little bit better right if i select this just to show you what's going on you can see that this is my this is my lobby uh, let's do it down here as well. Um, so I have this this sort of shell, um, that this bottom floor. It doesn't really matter for for if it, if you don't see the edge, but this is kind of annoying me. So I'm going to run the boolean difference command again. Uh, subtract from the bottom with the, uh, the the stairwell that goes through. And now it's it's really easy to see, right? That that your stairwell sort of comes out, and and that's how you can get out of the the building if you need to or get into the lobby from here. Um, and this is actually uh, a little bit wrong, right? So I'm going to isolate this. Actually, I'm going to shift select the, the base and then isolate these. And so now what I want to do is, is subtract out an element of the lobby. And I'm going to make what, what I call uh, dummy objects, uh, which are basically just boxes. Uh, that I use for a very particular purpose. So I'm not using any new commands here. I'm just using a series of commands that we've used before um, to eliminate the sort of shell. And now that's annoying me as well, so I'm going to run Boolean difference. I want to subtract from this with this, and you can see that this thing is sort of sitting above it. Uh, but that's fine because we we understand that the program sort of goes below it um, as well. Uh, if you really wanted to be precise about it, you could you could split this and show that the lobby um, goes there. Actually, why don't why don't we go ahead and and do that? Um, so I'm going to instead of boolean differencing that, I'm going to do the the reverse of it. So I'm going to subtract from this with this. Oops, um, and so this is a poly surface, which uh, is not quite on the edge there. You can see that it is, I, I scaled it a bit wrong. So I'm going to go to a wireframe mode here, and I'll scale 1D. And I want the uh, poly surface edge, actually let's do move face. And you can see that I'm moving that right one, 
and we want that to be aligned perpendicularly. Got a shaded mode here, and so now you can see that they're coplanar because they're doing that weird thing. And so now I'm going to do Boolean difference, subtract from this with this, and then now you can see if I show, that's how you get into the lobby, right? Um, so I might actually want to do something else here by drawing a box. Um, taking that box, putting it on the lobby layer, Boolean unioning with the larger object. So now you can see that all of this selects. And then I can do a Boolean difference and difference out the, uh, the thing there. So you can see different ways to get into, into my building. Now this is a little bit different. This is actually a void. And uh, the process for creating this void um, is, um, is pretty easy. Um, we could follow a, a couple different ways, but I'll show you this method. I just want this to be, to be gone, essentially, right? And this is already a void because I've deleted the top and the bottom of this. But we need that back wall. So what I'm going to do first is, is cut it out by using Boolean difference. I want to subtract from the bottom form with this sort of form. And I'm going to go ahead and delete it. And now I need to just fill in a few walls. Um, while we're at it, I'm going to actually Boolean difference those elevators out so you can see that they get to the floor. And, uh, and that's good. So I'm going to use a, a plane command here. So it's, it's a uh, surface. Actually, we're going to use plane and I'm going to uh, use the three points. So I'm using P as the, um, the sub command and I'm just going to draw this in. Again, three point, and we'll just fill that out. Right, so now I have a, uh, a sort of floating um, shell uh, and I have a courtyard. There's one more wall that I need to do here, uh, but these don't look to intersect very well. So I'm going to run the intersect command. Whoops. Intersect. There we go. So there's the intersection, right? What that allows us to do is if I run the plane command. Uh, by the way, this happens a lot. I accidentally run plan instead of plane. Uh, if you get stuck here, that's because uh, plan looks at a plan view of the seaplane. So whatever seaplane you have, it'll, it'll do that. Um, I am going to change this to perspective really quickly and then change it back to parallel. I, th I find that's the fastest way to, to get out of that accident. Anyways, let's run the plane command, not the plane command. Let's run three point. And now you can see that this snaps really well to the, uh, to the intersections here. And so this is sort of a wall that, that we'll see going all the way through our building. And if you go to a top view of our building, we change this to a shaded mode. You can see how it's organized. You can see that the lobby um, has some elevators. There's a nice little hallway um, to get to there, to get to the outside if you need to, a uh, sort of waiting area and a courtyard. And I'll show you how to color this um, later with, uh, with something like a hatch. Um, so that we can, uh, or we could just label it to know that it's it's sort of an outdoor um, element, and this is not an outdoor element. Um, so we're almost there. I think I need to add this last um, item. And actually, what I need to do is uh, make this not solid because I'm going to put my um, cooling towers there, and I need to to make that void um, at the back. So let's go back to a wireframe mode here, and you can see the uh, the loading dock. So I'm going to use extrude curve, and let's go actually all the way to the top here, and let's do a boolean difference, We're subtracting from that with that. And by the way, if if I run that command again, you can see that I'm subtracting from this. I'm hitting enter, and now I can hit delete input so that I don't want to keep that, and it will disappear without me having to um, type delete. Um, so this looks like I drew it a little bit off, so we don't have to boolean it, but that's fine. Uh, what I do want to do, though, is cut this, cut this top part out. So I'm going to uh, draw a line here from this intersection to this intersection. I'm going to take that line and I want to make sure I grab the right line. 
And I'm gonna extrude curve, go down here. And we'll try the split command here. So object to split, we'll choose the splitting object. And now you can see that that actually worked successfully. I'm gonna explode this. Uh, what I do a lot is if I explode things and I want to join things later, I just control click the things I don't want to join and then type join and I can um, delete the other elements. Um, so there we go. Uh, that's looking that's looking pretty good. Um, we just need the rest of the building, right? So this thing. Um, so um, I don't know if I it's because I deleted it. Uh, it probably is. Just draw another box here. And we're gonna boolean out all of the other things. Whoops, I had delete on there, so I'll run the command again. D is the sub command. And there you go. Um, so that's essentially our, our building. And because this is an interior space, a quick trick that you can do is um, you can change this to uh, a new sublayer called interior and you can give it like a light gray um, backdrop and so if you go to uh, you know a mode where you can see all that stuff you'll actually have um, it'll look like an interior shot so as I'm finishing up here I, I'm noticing something that I don't necessarily like which is these um, these elevators right so I'm gonna move these the back and now this void is kind of annoying to deal with uh, I'm gonna again use the isolate command and I'll just draw a box here and it doesn't matter what layer it is on necessarily because we can change it it'll get absorbed and we're gonna do a boolean union and we're gonna join these two things and actually whatever you click first will be the thing that absorbs it so you can see there um, these faces are kind of nice if you know how to use something called sub D modeling, but we're not doing that. Um, what I encourage you to do then is just merge, use a command called merge all faces and that will make it look um, nicer. So I'll show here and again I have to boolean difference. Boolean is a pretty big thing in Rhino. Um, I do it a lot, especially in the conceptual stages. Um, to see the, uh, the development of, of my building. Uh, so I think I have everything here. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, add in the cooling towers. So the cooling towers are here. This isn't enough um, room necessarily and I actually exploded this. Um, so I'll shift select that and let's move it back a few feet. And you can see my diagram is essentially the same, but I need to, again, fill this hole. Um, and you can do that with a box right here. I'm going to use um, sub-D modeling. So if you hold Control and Shift at the same time, you can select sub-elements, and then you can use Move. I can actually use Move Face. That's a sub-element command. And I can move that face into place. And then again, run Boolean Difference. And you have this sort of thing. Okay, so cooling towers. Uh, I'm going to make a new um, sub-layer uh, called cooling. Actually, we'll just call it CT. And give this like a yellow. And let's go ahead and make some boxes. Um, I probably need four, and they're about 10 by 20 um, by 20. These are big. And you can see it doesn't fit there, but what I, I can do is I can move this back again with sub D modeling or move face. I can move these, these guys. And here I'm just going to use scale 1D to get that wall to line up. Now, if those were joined already, it wouldn't have mattered. Um, so we can move these. I'll move this over. And then I'll copy. I just need a little bit of a gap there. And now I know exactly what that gap is. So I'm going to use 
copy. Now I have four cooling towers at the, uh, the back of my building. There's not enough room around them, um, so uh, I would probably um, advise moving the building up. So we're just gonna move everything here. Oops, we don't wanna move the lot. To give it a little bit more um, space to work with. And you can use move edge as well. So let's use move edge. Uh, this is a little bit trickier though, because you have to make sure your direction is um, in the right direction. Um, and there we go. We got a nice little courtyard with some cooling towers. It's gonna be a little bit noisy, but um, I think that's, that's fine. It'll be like a nice drone. Um, and I do have some space on the back. It's just under the, under the building. So I, I should have enough space here. Um, and again, it's a conceptual diagram, so we can, um, we can change all of this stuff later. So there we go. That's essentially my building. Um, I am going to make one more sub layer and I'm going to call this shell. And I messed something up there, but, um, Let's put this on the shell layer, and now we can hide the shell, and we can see the the core of our building, right? That we have this this sort of courtyard, this open space with some with some cooling towers. They they actually don't need to be that tall. Uh, that's already 20 feet, I think. Well, that's 15 feet. Yeah, let's just make those a little bit smaller. You'll probably see some vents or stuff on the back here, which I don't mind. I think that'll be kind of a cool aesthetic. Um, vents popping into this sort of this shell, this machine. Um, and that's essentially the, uh, the diagram of my building. Um, so what I'm going to show you are a couple more tricks to, to documenting this and, and adding some elements like louvers and, um, and awnings and canopies. So there's one uh, one thing that I gotta I gotta snip into the to the video here. Um, I forgot to show you how to, to make floors uh, in your diagram, which is fairly important. And I'm gonna show you a couple ways. I'm gonna show you with this more finished building, and I'm gonna show you with uh, more of a diagram form. Um, the way I would recommend doing it is using what's called the contour command. Um, now, I can do this for all of my elements, but I, I can turn off some of the, uh, the elements that I don't need. And you can see here, I even missed putting these on the louver layer. Let's turn that on. Um, let's go ahead and select all of this stuff. And actually, these won't, these are going to be exterior um, fires, or sorry, um, Elevators, so they won't stop at a level so I, except the top. So I'm just gonna, I'm not contour that, and then I'm just selecting all of these these elements. And the way that I've built my building is that I, I have a first floor that's about 20 or sorry 15 feet up, and then I have uh, uh, I'm gonna have floors every 12 feet. So I ran the contour command. And here I'm going to start at a place where I know it is starting and go that direction. And I'm just going to type 15 feet. And what this does is it gives me a series of lines um, that show me where the, the floors in, in my building are. And so I can just have it like that where actually this, this worked out quite well that I can copy this stuff up. Uh, and these are, are put onto uh, the layer that you're currently working on. Um, so let's undo that. Let's rerun the contour command. Select the items that we need. I think I selected that. Yep, and I need that. Uh, let's actually make a new layer. Uh, and that's fine, we can rename it later. Uh, and let me go up the side of the building here. Let's turn the center off. Oops, need to run that again. Okay, contour. Uh, go ahead here.
that's the direction and we want it at 12 feet right and so now these are all on on this layer so let's go to the massing layer and, and let's turn those off and now i can right click and i can select oops not that one i need to select objects and i control control c and control v and let's go up here and i want this to be at five feet so uh that's too too much uh let's do three feet so i know that these are going to be my structural and my mechanical plenums generally for my building this this might change um, so, so that's one way to do it and now you can see in the massing diagram you can see the, where the floors are um, right and you you can trim this stuff out you know you can you can go and you could select this item and you could say trim and it's and you can trim out the curves if you don't want those to be you know certain levels but you know, in this diagram, I don't have a floor there, and I might actually want to, I'm going to need a floor that goes from that fire stair over uh, into the elevator as well. So this is going to be sort of like a multi-story plaza, um, and this is going to be some circulation. So this is going to change, and so th this is a fairly good diagrammatic representation. If I turn my shell on here again, uh, you can see, you can still see the floors, especially on the back. Uh, it helps with, with windows too, so if you do this early on in the process, um, like I'll show you now. Uh, let's say I have two boxes. And let's copy this. And let's move this. So this is somewhat like the building. Let's go 45 feet. Um, now, if uh, let's move that one back. If I contour, let's just do both of them and do it at 15 feet. Um, you can see that it's it's just going to show me where the, the 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 layers are. I can also type a plane, and if I have asymmetrical floors, I can move this up 15 feet, and then I can run the intersect command. So just to prove, you know, there's no line in there. I can run. Anymore, I can run intersect and intersect these two objects and get a, uh, a floor space. Uh, so that's how you denote floors. You can run the contour command and just select multiple objects. Um, if I have a third object here, let's say a box that goes maybe at the back of the building. Uh, and I run contour, I select these two objects, but these elevators only go up. You don't necessarily need to designate where those floors are. Um, so we're gonna go from here to here and then do 15. And you can see it doesn't contour those, but we can still see the floors. Um, and now you can um, draw rectangles on you know, the, the, the facade from, from floor to floor if that's what you wanna do. Okay, uh, so there's one element I missed. Um, which I am going to fix here. Um, and then we're going to do the roof. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to the top view here. I missed this, um, this stairwell. So I'm going to extrude this. Let's go to the top view here. And I know this one goes to the roof. And we'll do Boolean difference. Actually, this is off a little bit because I scaled the building. Uh, let's just go ahead and use move face because we don't need this to be super accurate. Align that with that. Uh, let's use move edge. Um, and actually, we don't we don't need this anymore, do we? That's why that wall was there. Um, and then we can do a boolean difference, so let's subtract from this with this, and let's move this to fire stairs, uh, and difference, subtract from this with this, and that didn't work. Um, let's try and figure out why it didn't work here. Actually, this is missing a surface, so I'm gonna use cap. And then we'll run Boolean difference again. 
So what you see, uh, or what results, are sort of uh, the primary massing elements, um, how they're getting to the roof, and some of the stuff isn't necessarily going to go all the way up, right? There might be a little void there. Um, so we can actually scale this down by a floor. I'm going to make it about 12 feet at the top there. Actually, let's do 15 feet so that you don't see the canopy. Um, and I'm going to use Move Face. And I'm just going to select all of these faces. So I know all of these things don't necessarily need to go to the, the roof. And let's select the starting point and let's do 15 feet. And again, I can turn the shell on and I still have that sort of you know, massing. Um, I don't like that this necessarily sticks out. I would like that to be more of a a uh, concrete element, so I'm going to make a box here and boolean difference this with delete on and there we go. So that's um, essentially where there will be a wall, right? Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to explode sort of the core of the building. And uh, what that allows me to do is control click the top and rejoin everything. And now I have a surface minus one. Uh, another way to do that is to use a command called extract surface. And that allows me to extract that surface from the solid. Now you can see that that's its own sort of thing. And I'm going to move this down negative 15 feet as well. And so now I have sort of a, a rooftop pavilion, um, if you will, um, that I'll probably put some partitions here in the end um, to make it, you know, a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So you can have some storage back there maybe, and then that wall will continue. Maybe this, this uh, sterile eventually gets built out a little bit. Um, but that allows me to get stuff onto the roof as well um, if I need to through that freight elevator. And I have two staircases that can be accessed at, um, at opposing corners. Um, and really this doesn't need to go all the way up for the whole, you know, in, in reality, because you, you could, you could slope it. I mean, you could cut half of it off. Like there, there's different ways to deal with it. But for right now I'm fine with, uh, with how it looks. Um, so that's, that's okay. Uh, let's try something here, Boolean difference. We're going to subtract from this with these items. Whoops. Actually, I'm going to use trim. And I'm just trimming these surfaces out. You can see that they're, they're overlapping. And uh, I can also use trim in this manner by uh, selecting this and selecting this. I'm going to isolate them. And now I'm just going to trim out where I know I already have walls. So this is all wall, this is all wall, whoops. Um, I'll probably need to explode that first and then trim it. And then we can select all this stuff and rejoin it. And now if I show, you can see that nothing's overlapping. It's fairly, fairly clean model so far. So the way I've planned this out is to have a, um, a, an auditorium on the roof as well. And what this allows me to do is, is uh, activate like a half level here on this, um, this stairwell. And I'm going to split this. So let's isolate this. And I know that I want to split this over here. And I kind of need this as well. And I'm going to run the split command. I want to split this object with these objects. So now you can see that this is its sort of its own thing. And I'm going to use a rotate 3D command. And I'm going to draw in the axis. And I'll probably rotate this about 20, uh, maybe 15 degrees. 20 is a lot. And this is sort of like an auditorium on the roof, right? Um, I'm going to show here. And you can see that that doesn't quite line up, but that's that's OK. Uh, we're just going to draw another plane um, from, from this corner over to this corner. And 
So I'll actually have to move it up here. Again, using move and turning vertical on. I, I really like that, uh, that trick. And so now I sort of have a, uh, an auditorium here. It's probably sloping a little bit too much. Let's, let's undo that. Let's use rotate 3D again. And let's just, I don't know, do eight degrees. It's probably good. And then I'm going to isolate this, these two things. And I'm going to trim out some things. This is kind of annoying, but whatever. We'll just we'll just keep it there. It's a gutter. It's a fake gutter. Um, and uh, let's drop plane again. Whoops, did it again. By the way, if you're ever lost here, a really nice trick is um, uh, see, like I'm really lost. I can just select something and type Z to get to zoom and do S to get to select it. So now I'm just around um, this this thing. Let's go parallel here. And oh, man, that's three times in a row. And draw this plane in, right? Uh, so let's select these things, isolate, I use this, uh, this method a lot, um, selecting, isolating, hiding things, and then um, showing things um, that I know I, I need. Um, so this is a little bit strange, uh, but actually that could be a cool, nice little um, glass, you know, thing, I don't know, a little window there or something at the bottom. Um, but I'm just going to bring it down. So we'll, we'll take this again and we'll isolate it. So I hide all of the other elements. You can also turn all of the layers on and off, but when you know, you just need to work with a few things. I'm going to do move edge and select these edges. And direction constraint is vertical and we know this is going to go to here. So there we go. It's, uh, it's all cleaned up. It's not perfect. Um, actually, I did that wrong. I'm just going to draw a plane here. So let's use plane three point. I know it's going to go from here. Actually, I know. It's going to go from here to vertical. All the way to here. And then let's move this over. So you can see that I'm using a combination of solid elements and, and planar elements. And we don't necessarily need to join all of these things because uh, we're not going to 3D print this, you know, we're just getting a diagram off of this and, and the cleaner your model is, uh, we, we might end up actually having to redo a few of these things. Um, uh, just because, uh, you know, when we bring it into Revit, you know, this, this face might not be super clean. So we have to sort of rebuild it as a box. Uh, but that's on a case by case basis. And we're just doing our best to sort of show our intentions here. So what I have on the roof is a, sort of a little a little auditorium, and I have access to the stairwell on both ends. And uh, at the back, I have access to elevators and a stairwell as well. Um, so a freight elevator goes up here. I would probably partition this off. Let's go ahead and do that with a plane and use the three-point command. And I'll do it this way. I'll just draw it on one side, and then I'll scale 1D. And I'll probably move this over negative one inch, right? Because that wall would actually be behind that freight elevator, uh, which would have its own sort of little shed. Um, we could do plane again um, and run the three point command and just add this. But this is getting to a lot of detail that we don't necessarily need, right? Where um, we'll, we'll have uh, we're a lot of planes and walls and stuff, and uh, it's, it's not 100% necessary. Um, 
not 100% necessary to get correct. And these will have thickness eventually. We don't need to give those thickness now. Let's go ahead and save here. So there's one more element for the canopy that I need to add, um, which is the, the, the canopy itself. Sorry, there's one more thing for the roof that I need to add. And I'm just gonna do this as a plane. And I'm gonna go over the whole, uh, the whole thing. And I'm just gonna move this up like two inches and probably scale it down just, just a tiny bit. Um, so we get a little bit of a, you know, a, a separation there and, uh, I'm going to put it on a new layer and call it canopy. And so I can turn that on and off if I, if I want, right. Um, because, uh, what that allows me to do is show the building as a full form right now. I can see it as there's some overlapping elements and we can just sort of fudge that into place by scaling it again. And there you see the, the, the whole of it, but uh, it doesn't necessarily work well for all your diagrams. So now you can see that this is a, a diagram building, right? Which will eventually be worked into a, into a real building, right? With, with windows and, and, and um, uh, walls and floors. Um, so speaking of windows, let's go ahead and uh, do that next. Um, so this is the shell is going to be a screen, um, and I don't necessarily know if I'm going to teach you how to, to make a screen in Rhino uh, because it's a little bit too much materiality. We will we might do it in Revit though, so so don't don't um, ignore the, the viability of some stuff like that. Uh, let's start drawing some windows on this thing. Um, so I'm going to make a new sub layer here and just call it windows. Now there's a bunch of different ways that we can do windows. Um, the, the first, uh, let me change this to a cyan layer. It's to just draw on the, the walls, right? Um, so if I know that this is going to be, uh, I'm going to have some punch, uh, windows here. I could do that actually. Uh, where can I put some punched windows? This might be nice. If this is not all glass, I could put them over here. Uh, maybe on the back, actually through the, the shell. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's put a few punched windows here, uh, right at the, the exit of the stairwell. Um, so I'm gonna change the C plane. I'm actually gonna be able to draw on some of these things. So I'm gonna set C plane to object and select the plane I want. And you can see that the C plane has changed and it's now on the, the face. And so if I draw a rectangle, you can see it's on, it's on the face. Uh, so strangely enough, I really like that randomly generated window. So I'm gonna keep that. I think cause I, you know, I'm seeing that form and I really like it. Um, and I'm going to uh, do a few more punched windows. Let's do them here. And you can see I need to see, change the C plane again. Draw a rectangle. And let's copy it. Uh, let's actually control Z, control C. Uh, what I do a lot is I control C, control V to the same place, and then I, I move it 15 feet. So there you go. So there I have three windows to this sort of open courtyard. So this will be a solid wall um, of the courtyard, and you'll get a nice, uh, so these will be large curtain walls. So uh, to designate curtain walls, um, what I would do is you, we can keep them just as planar surfaces. Uh, and you can build a mullion grid on them. Um, so let's go ahead and build on this surface here. First, let's set the C plane to this object. And um, I'm just gonna frame this out here. And I'm going to divide this top curve. And uh, actually, let me get the length first here. And length is a subcommand of divide, and it says it's 82. It's almost 83 feet. Uh, let's let's run this again. And I know that my mullions probably want to be about three feet apart. Um, so we're at about maybe 25 mullions. 
And now those points will stay and you can see that down there it's three feet three inches. And rather than copying this, which you could do, um, I'm going to array linear. And I already selected the item and I know I divided it 30 times, but I want 31, but I've already copied one, so I actually want 30. And then I'm gonna give it this, um, oh, I did 25. So uh, because there's 25 divisions, uh, that means there's 20, 20, 26 points that I actually need, or 26 lines that I actually need. So I've already copied one, so let's run 25, and this should go all the way to the edge. Yeah, you can see those um, are on the edge there. I'm gonna fill out this, and I'm gonna select these few. And let's scale 1D, let's make these a little bit larger. And let's just finish that out. And you can see that intersects there. It's not, it's not perfect, but that's, that's totally fine. Uh, so now that sort of designates like the mullions, right? We would probably copy this up to every floor as well, um, but, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, now I can do this again on this wall. So maybe I wanted to go all the way up here. Let's draw these two curves. And you can see that this one is accidentally a little bit in front of it. Um, so let's actually move this one over here. And it's gonna change our, um, our scaling a little bit, but that's fine. We have like a little a little lip there, but that, that's totally okay. Um, for, for this class, we're not so concerned. Um, and we're gonna have to probably redo a lot of this stuff in Revit, so we just wanna designate where the where the lines are gonna go. And sometimes you run into these little accidents which you kinda like, you know? Some Bob Ross stuff. Uh, so let's take this line and let's divide. Uh, let's figure out the length. And I can actually type three feet, three inches, right? And it will give me approximation. There, There's one probably on the end here that's, that's not um, correct, but we're all good, and um, you can see that it uh, it was 106 feet. Uh, so we need probably like 35 of these. I wasn't really paying attention to it, but that's okay. Yeah, see, we have 35 and a little bit more. So we're gonna move this over. And uh, we don't need this. And so I'm gonna draw a line here from this to this and from this over. And you can see I'm, I'm not even being perfect with it. I'm not super diligent right now because I know this is just a, a diagram of our model of our building so I'm using the trim command and now I just trimmed out all of those those elements right uh, by the way if you want to get rid of these points they are actually points they're they're geometries and so you could just sell the points and delete them because we now we have the sort of edges um, the, the points already Go ahead and turn my canopy off here. So, so I like that. I like that sort of um, canopy or the, these windows that are being created, um, and uh, this these curves that are being, uh, or this large window at the end that's that's being created as well. So this would be fine for your windows, right? If we if we made this into a massing model, it's it's totally fine to say this is where my window wall is going to go, especially if you have a lot of, of windows. Um, for, for something like this, uh, we can actually trim this out and get a, a sort of void, right? Um, you might need to select your solid and explode it first to be able to trim it. Uh, but you also get some, some weird stuff like this, right? Like you get some overlapping stuff. So, so this would be totally fine. Um, you can also run a hatch command and that would produce something that's solid. Um, you can also put um, some line elements and give it about a 45 degree rotation. Uh, let's change this by a factor of five. 
and then you can see that this would be uh, a window, right? It's enough. It's it's, it's sort of like a, a a diagram version. Um, we could do that here too. We just run the command, and it remembers the hatch. And I'm doing this all on the window layer. So this would be nice. This would be nice enough to, to, to turn in. Sometimes there's a bit of overlap, and, and in that instance, I would keep the curve the same. That will help us when we're importing into Revit. And just move it off of the wall like an inch. And you don't really notice it, um, but uh, it, it tends to not overlap um, as much. So I think we're, we're fairly close to, to finishing up the, the, the building here. Um, I want to talk about uh, materiality now um, and what I would do to show um, some, some materials on here. Now I'm going to go into a rendered mode. And in my rendered mode, I'm going to make sure my skylight is set to maybe uh, 0.7, just so I can see the building a little bit better, right? You can also turn the sun off. Uh, and change your, your skylight uh, to one. And so now I can start to, to, to visualize my building without all of the, the program necessarily. I can just see what it looks like from the outside. And uh, if I click this, and or if I click an object, right, and I want to change its materiality, I can change it in a couple ways. I can change it by the layer. So let's say this is, this is on my fire stairs layer. I want that to be um, solid. Um, that, well, this technically wouldn't be my fire stair necessarily. This would be like a, a grand staircase that, that would eventually go into a fire stair. It's just a, on the stairwell layer. Um, if I want to change the whole object, like this lobby layer, I can actually change it to... Uh, I, I can change the lobby material on the, mat on the material um, on the layer dropdown. And when I go there, I can use a new material, and for glass, I recommend plastic, where the reflectivity is uh, maybe 86, the transparencies, and maybe the low 70s, and you can keep it um, fairly polished. And so there it starts to disappear, right? It's probably a little bit too transparent, so let's move it to like a 55. And now you can sort of see that this is... Um, uh, this, is uh, this is all glass. Now, what would happen if I wanted to, to change just the top material? Well, I, I would, what I would probably do in this instance is explode this. And uh, you can select this item and then change this, uh, this material individually. So now I have the, the top, which is going to be a floor level or just a roof. And you can see that its material, when I select the individual object, is by layer. Uh, and I can change this to the default material or whatever I want. And now it's uh, it's closer to to what really would be um, you know in the object and or, sorry in in the the building. So I have a problem here too. And whenever you have a transparent object, sometimes it's hard to select. So you want to probably select close to the edge of the object. And here I'm having some difficulty with the uh, with the transparency. I don't want that to be transparent. So again, I'm I'm changing it. I'm changing all of these materials. This is a bit of a, of a problem. Um, I would probably want to make this solid, but, but that's, that's fine for right now. Um, there's no real thickness in any of this stuff, so we just sort of have a diagram of our building, and uh, I think it's, it's working um, fairly successfully right now. Um, so that's how you change materials. Um, let's go ahead and turn the, uh, the shell on. So if I want this shell, to be somewhat transparent, what I would do is I would make a material, uh, probably a plastic, again, I would give it a frosted quality, and I would give it a transparency of maybe 40 or 50 percent, uh, let's try 60, oh, when it goes 60, the, the display mode kicks in um, a lot. Let's try about 50, and we want no reflectivity. So there you can see I have a shell around my building, and it's sort of um, still represented by... Um, you can still see all of the, the elements of the building. So I'm going to go back to a shaded mode. Uh, let's go over a couple more things. Let's, uh, let's look at uh, columns. So for right now, um, we can assume columns are going to be... 
um, concrete or just abstract representations. Uh, so no I-beams, you know, that sort of stuff. You can make skinny columns, uh, but just make everything a box. Um, so right now I'm on the columns layer and we're going to make a box that's... Uh, actually, I need to reset the, uh, the top view here. So the, the, um, the, the world seaplane and I'm going to make a box. Man, I'm typing that wrong. And I'm going to type two feet and two feet and let's go up to the roof here or the shell and let's sort of move these in place uh, so actually I think center will work on this no it won't there we go and there you can go to the midpoint of my loading zone uh, and I don't want to interrupt this so I'm going to control C control V let's go out 12 feet and another 12 feet right at the edge. So I know this is this is about 20 feet, uh, which is which is a good rule of thumb. And I can actually move it back uh, just a little bit. So there I have two two columns, um, which aren't intruding on my my freight elevator um, necessarily. I could probably remove this column. Actually, I probably just need one column here. And realistically, I could probably engineer this so that I didn't need any column, but, but I kind of like that. And this shows you how to make a, a column, right? So this way you can sort of pull up um, here, unload some stuff, either go into the freight elevator or sort of go in this back area um, directly into the, uh, um, the, the theater back of house. Um, you can also access the cooling towers from here um, as well. So the last thing I'm going to talk about that this, uh, in this tutorial before we, we go over the checklist, make sure everything's done, and then go into documentation, uh, are louvers. Um, so I'm going to hide this, this sh uh, shell, and I'm going to make a new massing layer called louvers. And uh, you don't necessarily need to do this all in a massing layer, but what's kind of nice about that is you can... Uh, you can hide each each iteration, right? If you're diligent about it. Now, a lot of that stuff is on the default layer, uh, but you can do multiple iterations without having to um, load new files. So, anyways, let's make some some louvers. It's essentially you know, long, skinny columns. Um, you could do it in a couple ways. Um, let's say I wanted to to start here. Um, I'm just selecting that point and I'm going to give it a few dimensions. I know that I want it to be two inches thick and I want it to be two feet long and I know what I want it to be this high. Now it's on the wrong side of the building um, so I'm going to rotate here and we'll move this into place and you got to be a little bit careful here, but again, we're not being super diligent about it because even even this is going over the edge. Um, you know, when you are to array this, you have to be careful where this starts and where this ends because if you array from this point to the edge, that last mullion will be over the the end. But for right now, I think we can we can assume that that that's not you know our main concern. And I'm going to array linear. And this was what 35 items, and uh, there you go. So I have a bunch of louvers. And I probably did something wrong here on, on these walls. Um, what I would probably end up doing is, is going through and, and making sure, I think it was a line that was off, um, just making sure that that line is, is correct. And you can actually rotate all of these stuff, all of these things at once. and make sure it fits on the building, right? So now I know that that's perfectly in line. Uh, and this one I can delete, and this one I would just move over. Um, and let's select these lines as well. Um, so there is a tool that I haven't gone over, which is the, the filter selection. If I know there's a bunch of curves that I want to select here and I don't want the stuff behind it, right, that, that's kind of annoying, I can shift select the, the curves 
And what that will allow me to do is just select the curves um, in the or inclusively, and I can sort of control click a lot of this stuff. And now I can rotate um, from here to here and make sure that that's in line. Right. Okay. So that's louvers. Uh, if I turn my shell back on, you can see that it's on the outside. I would want to probably scale 1D and make sure these things actually go, the shell actually goes on the, uh, the outside of the louvers. And so if we go to uh, like a rendered view here, you can see that that would be um, uh, nice, nice little massing. And uh, let's go ahead and hide the canopy again, or sorry, the shell, and let's take some of these elements Oops, didn't get that right. Let's just go all the way to the ground. There we go. So show. And turn the rendered mode on there. And we can turn the sun on. Turn the skylight to 0.2. Actually, that's too low. Okay, so let's go over the checklist here. Um, I'm gonna turn this to a shaded mode and make sure I have everything in my building. Uh, so final building masses, that's what we spent the last hour doing. Um, show first floor porches. Um, we'll have to show that in the, uh, when we get to the, the diagram mode. Um, this, uh, be, because I have a porch on the roof and I also have a, a courtyard we'll have to show there. Um, I'll have to show these as well. Uh, minimum two fire stairs, we have that. We're going to show that. We showed the, the cooling models. Um, we're going to differentiate between what's exterior and what's window. Uh, we, well, we already did that with the hatches and the lines. Um, the louvers on the windows, we, we put those on. Um, I've already added a rail and I showed you how to do the rail as well so you can do that with a three point or an extrude curve uh, sorry three point plane or extrude curve um, you can see the we, we've got the elevators that go to the roof we've got the freight elevator that goes to, root, to the roof um, we are gonna throw show uh, we, we're, we're showing our, our three elevators in the program and the rest is just labeling um, so, so that's good. So let's go ahead and uh, load in some files. So if you go to Canvas, I've given you some display modes here. And the one we're really interested in is, is diagram by, by layer, no shadows. And I'm also going to do diagram by layer to show you the difference. I'm just going to download these here. Uh, and just keep these. I know it's a weird message, but .ini files are not a, a standard file type. They're just designated for Rhino, so uh, how I need to import these is by going into my model and typing options. And if you scroll down to the Rhino options, you can go down to view, it's the last one, you can open it up, and under display modes you'll see an import button here. Um, now I have a few modes that you might not have, uh, but let's go ahead and get to these, and you can only do one at a time, but that's fine. Go ahead and import that other one. And okay, we're good to go. So let's look, let's take a look at this diagram by layer, no shadows. So what this allows you to do is, let's turn on the context. Um, it allows you to, to show your building um, with uh, no shadows on and, and the program is highlighted. And if you give this some sort of materiality, actually you can see that this lobby has a window, but it's red. Um, it's, it's really nice to be able to, to see that, that sort of stuff, the, the transparency that we want. Uh, this is kind of annoying me, so I'm gonna scale one D. And some of the stuff you can, you can fudge, you know, like you can, you can push this out a little bit. So we'll engineer this in, in, in Revit. Uh, if, if we even need to engineer it um, for this class, 
um, just know that you know these are the sorts of questions that, that we have to answer as, as engineers. Um, let's take a look at the other uh, mode, which is diagram by layer. You can see I have my shadows on here. So if you want to do like a, a really clean, concise, you know, big looking diagram, like, I, you know, this is the way to do it. Um, let's go ahead and turn the canopy on here so you can see that this is uh, a canopy over the, the whole the whole room. So this is all, um, this is all an outside shaded view it's a it's a park in there and i might poke some holes in there or whatever but but for right now it doesn't doesn't really matter um, i might open this up as well you know in other iterations uh you could actually walk out on onto here uh, which would be kind of nice so so maybe uh let's just go ahead and do that now so let's do point and what that will allow me to do is show how um uh, you, you can use a clipping plane or, or the like to show levels that are below your uh, your top floor uh, for your diagram. So let's go ahead and use plane, three point, and I'm going to add here, here, and here. Whoop, go slow. Um, so I'm just going to go back to shaded, no shading. And let's use plane, three point. And let's go out to there. Three point plane. And so now I have a, a, a sort of walled off thing and I'm going to uh, use this and this to trim out the, the wall there. Oops, that didn't work. Um, so let's go ahead and run the intersect command using the line. So this is a line result. Now I'm going to use the trim command. And again, that didn't work. So I'll use explode as sort of a last ditch effort to trim those out. Okay, so something's not lining up quite right. So let's undo that. I'll scale this. That's why I just needed to delete it. So there we go. So you can see it better in a shaded mode probably that this is now sort of a porch where you can go out on. Um, so this will be a fairly deep roof. Uh, there will be some trees that you might see poking out at the top there or whatever. And this is a, a canopy um, that shades you when you get into the, to the top level. Um, okay, so now that we've imported these, uh, these nice display modes. Uh, let's go ahead and save the file. And I'm going to download another file, which is called Massing Layout. And what the Massing Layout is, is it's a 3DM file, but there's nothing in it. The only thing it has is what are, what are called layouts. And in Rhino, uh, it's, it's sort of the equivalent to to, to sheets. Um, these are sort of the, the sheets that you're going to print out and um, layouts uh, are right next to views at the bottom. You can use a command called import layout as well, but we're going to use this plus sign and click import layout. And now I'm going to go to this downloads where I just downloaded the massing layout. And now you can see it sort of auto populates, right? It gives me uh, the, the, only the only layers in that file were, were the layouts and then the sub layer grid lines. And so I can't select these grid lines unless I unlock it. Now layouts are scale drawings. This is an 11 by 17 drawing. And if I, I draw a line here, you can see that this is 17 inches by 11 inches. And these are what are called details. So these are little snapshots into, into my file. 
And what this allows me to do is, is move these around and, and place them on sheets, right? Now you don't have to, to change this much. The only thing you have to change is your, your name and your program and your climate. Uh, what I would recommend doing is double clicking that and, and changing it that way, or you can go ahead and go into the properties after you've clicked it and go to the text subheader and change it that way. So I'll change this. This is an auditorium. And let's say Austin Subtropical. You can see it changing, right? So how do we uh, manipulate these to to our advantage? I mean, these are these are pretty much already done, right? We can see we can see some things, but but the shell might not be the best thing to have in in, in some of these things. And you can see that there's some buildings here, and the canopy is a little bit hard to to see. Um, and right here, it's blocking a lot of our programs. So I'm going to go through these um, step by step. Um, first, we're going to go ahead and look at how we can hide things in detail. And then I'm going to show you how you can um, uh, draw over some of those details and also add in something like a clipping plane, which will allow you to um, cut through your building and see what's, what's inside of it. Um, so let's go ahead and look at this detail. I'm going to double click into it and notice I can't move around in it. Actually, when I select this detail, it's locked. It's locked at one inch equals 40 feet. So this is a scale isometric drawing. If I double click into it, you can see that I can select elements in my model, right? There's a command called hide in detail, uh, which allows me to, to, to do just that. I'm hiding elements in, in my detail. Um, so in that instance, I just hit it, hit, hit the shell, right? But I can also do it here in the context. Now I have to unlock that layer first. And I'm just gonna sele shift select some of these buildings and I'm gonna run hide in detail. So the problem with this is that we can't see that there are actual buildings here. It looks like there's a sort of an empty lot, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into this detail and shift select the, the lots. And from there, I'm going to run the intersect command. And you can see in this other view that we have a nice um, uh, footprint of our building. Uh, by the way, these are, are sort of default uh, line weights and it depends on if you've adjusted any of them. What I would recommend doing now is shift selecting all of your layers and changing it to uh, like 0.13 or 0.15. Now you can't see the change uh, unless you type uh, print display or you go down here on the drop down and type uh, or in turn uh, print preview on. Right there, you can see the lines get a little bit thicker and when I zoom in, they don't infinitely disappear. And this is uh, you know, a little bit crisper, a little bit cleaner. Um, here you can notice, I, I can actually model in these views, so I can do like a trim, and I can trim out the surfaces. But you can also model in the regular views by going back and, and modeling there. And, and this is the same environment. So this canopy is a little bit hard to read. So what I would probably do is give this the same materiality as the shell. Doesn't mean that it's see-through. It just means that uh, we we need to be able to see through it to see what's what's below it, right? That you have, uh, and this works really well here in the plan. Now you could probably turn this in, right? If you turn this in, we see all of the louvers. We see that you have, you know, your your lobby is connected to your your elevators, which are sort of shoved into the program. You have maybe some circulation in there, you have fire stairs, cooling towers, um, and we just need to maybe label a few things. Uh, but let's go ahead and double click into this view, and I'm going to use a command called clipping plane. And I'm just going to draw it on the floor here. And you can see what this does is it cuts literally into my building. Now, there's a few elements that are kind of weird that we probably have to work out uh, that are just sort of drawn elements. And I'm going to double click in here and I'm just going to move this clipping plane out of the way. By the way, you can still see it in some other views, so you might need to really move it away. And if you go to your northwest view, you can see I have it selected. So that's probably a good location. I'm going to move this up 42 inches as well, which is a standard 
height for a floor plan. And now you can see that this is a lot closer to a floor plan, but I need to go in and, and delete some of these curves that I originally had drawn. And so I have a lot of things that are unlocked here. And so what I'm gonna do is just unselect on this filter everything except curves. And so now I can only select curves. Let's go ahead and lock the site layer as well. And let's go to the massing layer, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these things so I can show you um, how to add these things later. Let's delete that. Let's delete that. Uh, we can delete that. Uh, we can even delete these sort of plans here. And you'll notice that the, uh, the canopy doesn't appear. So what I would recommend doing is actually, let's go to another view and let's use the project command. Uh, we're gonna unlock the context. We're gonna select the points to project, which will be the, uh, whoops, I need to turn on all of my other stuff. Uh, select the edges of the shell and select the, uh, the extrusion, which there, that's what we need to project onto. And so now you can see, I have this sort of, uh, this line that, that shows up here and it's right at the, the edge of the, the building. Uh, which is fine, but you can see it over over here. Um, so this lot is a little bit annoying, um, and the trick I would recommend uh, doing right now, just for a quick diagram, is to move this down one inch, and it'll it'll look like it's floating a little bit. That's totally fine. Now you can see that there's no overlap on any of this stuff. So we got to go ahead and. and uh, uh, delete some of these poly surfaces, right, that are maybe left over. Um, some extrusions that are in there. Oops, that's a wall that we actually need. And we can turn this on in this layer as well. So now that I'm in the 3D model, I can select the clipping plane and I can go ahead and turn it on in this mode. The reason why we're not using a clipping plane in all modes is because it cuts basically through through everything but it allows us to dissect what this geometry is. Um, and just for the sake of this, this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and move these over here and I'm going to shrink down my oversized um, cooling towers. Uh, so now if we go back to the massing diagram, you can see that this is sort of um, uh, whoops, I think I deleted a poly surface that I was not supposed to delete in there. Yeah, there we go. That's what I was not supposed to delete. But I need to, um, now if, let's, let's do this process again. Let's turn this. Uh, I can Boolean difference these. And I want to subtract from this with this. And that's how, whoops. Subtract from this with this. And there we go. You can see that it, it sort of sucks it out. And, and I want to do the same with these elevators and these, these sorts of things so there's not a double um, line. So I deleted the input. Um, there we go. And let's go ahead and subtract out of this with this. And that's fine. Yeah, that looks like all of the floors are good. I think I need to subtract out of this with this. And we're good to go. So I will emphasize that because this was just sort of um, this was sort of done ad hoc without a lot of 
of you know prep and it's the first time this is di this is the first diagram just going through all the three these cooling towers are probably they probably need a little bit more space um, and you know that's something you, you probably work out really early in your your diagram and your scheming but this is sort of what I was going off of so it's not a it's not a lot um, not a lot to work with um, so just keep in mind uh, keep that in mind Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to our massing diagram and um, let's turn off the clipping plane for a second and see the difference. Um, so let's go in here. Uh, let's type SEL clipping plane and let's go ahead and turn it off. So you can see the, you can see the difference, right? Um, There, it is on with the clipping plane. And again, this would honestly be close enough, right? We understand where everything is. The only thing I would maybe do is do a hide in detail um, of the canopy and start to label some of these things. Um, so let's undo that. I'm just gonna go ahead and go, um, uh, go ahead and go with this. Um, and I think uh, this extrusion could be deleted. Yeah, there we go. So this sort of stuff is a little bit annoying, right? That's the sort of stuff where iterating and, and, and changing your design would be like, oh, let's just move that over there. Or maybe this is good because it's a hallway and there's some stuff stored back there. I don't know. That's, that's the sort of stuff which we're not so concerned about right now. Um, again, like this too, like some of that stuff is what architects really like. They like finding those weird intricacies, but um, you know, for, for the diagram stage, we're not so concerned with the accuracy of those things. Um, so what I would recommend doing now is start to start to label some of these things. Um, and you can do this a couple ways. Uh, one is you can just type text and let's just type lobby. But it tends to be quite quite large because the default text is not changed. Um, so I would probably more recommend just copying and pasting something like that and changing this to auditorium. Now let's see if I can. Uh, so so by the way, I'm not in the detail. I, I can't select anything in the detail. The I'm, I'm literally drawing on the page. Um, so I have to double click to get in the detail. And the difference is if I type text, um, this, you could see it in all of the, you know, right? You could see it in the other ones uh, versus just on, on the, um, the page. Uh, so let's go ahead and try to select some stuff here. And actually I want this on the interior layer. And so I put it on an interior layer and it's a light gray so you can see what's inside and what's outside. Now we can see that this is outside and this is all interior space that we'll program and there will be probably an auditorium right here with some, some uh, circulation or whatever on, on the back end. Um, if I wanted to note where that, that uh, overhang is, what I would recommend doing is still, I'm not in the detail, so, so I can't really um, uh, access it in the same way, but, but you could. You could go into the detail if you need your snaps uh, more specific and you could draw in a rectangle uh, but again this will be created in all of the other views so you might want to um, just draw in on the actual page and there you can see um, you can see it's not appearing there and I just drew a rectangle here and I'm going to type hatch and let's change this to a one actually let's change this to 0.5 And there you can see that that's going to be like an overhang, right? Um, typically, this would be like a dashed area, but um, it's it's fine like this. Um, we can also draw a rectangle here, and actually, let's keep that because that's going to be like uncovered, right? Uh, but we can also diagram this way. You can you can just draw in rectangles and say, well, I want an overhang here. And so let's hatch this. And so then everything in your model is that's hatched is, is an overhang. Um, I'll just go ahead and delete this and uh, let's go ahead and finish out some of these things. That's lobby. 
This is courtyard. Let's move that over. I can just note this with FS as fire stair. Let's just do this as stair. And then what I would go ahead and do is just just draw these these X's in so we can see and um, and we can copy this stuff save ourselves some time. And the final thing here would be um, to actually let's let's do one one more thing. Just call this overhang. So I, I think it's up to you whether you want to show your bottom floor or you want to show the top floor. Like if your top floor is very close to your bottom floor, but it has a canopy and it shows how it's broken down, then maybe that's what you show. Um, you could also, you know, do both of these. You could copy this over and you could put two plans, but I think we just want one plan. You know, in the future, if you need to look at them both, that, that's fine. Uh, let's just call this porch. I think that looks better anyways. Uh, so that courtyard will go in and out and you can sort of see that over here. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and turn our actually so show in detail is the opposite of hide in detail and I'm just gonna keep this on because now we can sort of see how the, the building works out and this building is a bit chaotic right there's a lot of stuff going on um, there's a lot of elements um, which uh, you know maybe it's a little bit too much in a, in a certain sense, but but I think uh, it, I, I think it shows all of the elements that you need um, for your project. So again, let's take a look at this uh, side by side. Um, so final building masses, right? We can see we can see that we can see the lobby. We can see a stairwell on the back end here. Um, stairwell, stairwell, elevators, uh, and you can see, you can sort of just generate the, the general portions. Uh, we're showing first four por porches. Uh, this is uh, main entry. Um, actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a line uh, as a diagram. And I'm going to use one more command that we haven't used, which is mirror, to quickly generate this thing. Uh, and give myself some some arrows. Actually, I should have done that. On another layer. And by the way, you can copy and paste stuff. You just need to scale um, from the model to the sheet by the scale. So that's uh, one inch equals 40 feet, which is one over 480. Oops. And then you get, um, actually this needs to be scaled by 12. So it's just one to, to 40. Uh, so there you can see that that's how you enter. Actually, it would be probably closer to here. And then we'll do another thing here. Just to denote, you know, exactly how you get into this thing. Uh, and I'll type, maybe let's, let's do this. 
um, circul circulation above. Let's change this to a centered. And let's move that over and let's make Um, and there we go. Oh, uh, I need to do one more hatch here. Um, so let's make sure, uh, let's do a rectangle. And let's do hatch. And there you go. You can see all of the overhangs. You can see the auditorium, the fire stairs. Uh, minimum two fire stairs, fire stairs, fire stairs. We have a stair there. Uh, cooling towers, simple boxes. Differentiate between exterior and interior. Oh, those are uh, those are windows. Uh, you don't see it a lot in my model. You you might be able to see it on on the back side here. Um, and uh, if you if you want to keep the uh, the wireframe uh, outline, you can use a, a command called extract wireframe, and then you can hide in detail the the shell, and that shows sort of you know where the the shell is, and maybe that works better for your your hatch um, but I'll, I'll just keep this I mean the windows aren't aren't so important to show necessarily especially because I have a louvers here and you can see that that is all on that side um, perhaps shade or color the window we got that um, show louvers just told you about that we have the 42 inch railing um, I did this as quite you know large you, you could um, actually scale this down. Um, that actually is probably a good idea, better than a, a super tall wall. Um, I can give this 42 inches and I can do multiple items. And so again, it's probably best to um, uh, model in here, in, in the modeling environment. Let's turn off this clipping plane. And I'll select these things in bulk, scale 1D, and make those 42 inches. And I mean, you could do all sorts of subtle things here, you know, points on, you get that point and you can move it so that you get a sloped wall. Maybe that's adding too much, but that would be nice, right, to have sort of a, uh, an outlook on the city. There's a screen sort of in front of you, so when you're standing further away from it, you actually see it more of it. Um, and maybe there's a cutout on the screen there, so let's go ahead and change the, uh, set it to the object, and let's draw a rectangle, and trim that out. So there we have a little break in the screen, and now you can see on the massing diagram. Maybe we break that screen as well. So let's do project. Uh, I want to project those curves onto this. And I want to change the direction to that. And now I can trim out that. And so let's go ahead and change this hatch properties to like a one. Now let's do 0.5. Yep, there we go. So that's essentially it. Um, we have the three park elevators here. Um, we have the freight elevator right there. We have program elevators right there. Um, and uh, 10 point aerial font, by the way, is 0.1 inches. Um, it's point is is blank over 72 so 10 point is 10 over 72 um, which I think is a holdover from like typography days right like letterpress like actual people right they had cases or whatever of letters but anyways um, uh, you can select this stuff and you can see that this height oops uh, this height is um, 0.1 so a tenth a tenth of an inch um, so it's fairly close to um, 10 over 72. 
we have lobby, lobby for our program shown right there. Um, elevators, fire stairs, all shown here. Loading and trash shown. And um, I said here, like I put some arrows for the courtyard and um, I could put like a reflecting pool in here. You could just draw on top of this. Um, and maybe you put a, a circle here, you know, for a tree inside of the courtyard. Uh, let's do that. Right, and sometimes you do this thing where you kind of get two overlapping circles. And you have like a nice little tree in the courtyard there. Um, and uh, that's it. I think we're done. Uh, what's the time on that? That was about an hour and 45 minutes, so. Um, again, this video, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Um, I guess uh, let's go over printing before I, before I conclude. Um, so to, to print this out um, as a JPEG, go ahead and turn your grid lines layer off and just run um, Control P. Make sure your width is set to 17, your height is to 11, and this needs to be at least 300 dots per inch. Your view and output scale, we're going to keep that at layout and scale to fit. And the margins, we're not dealing with margins. Line type, we want to scale by one, and it doesn't matter what your default um, line width is because we probably changed this all to 0.13. And visibility, I don't think you need to change a lot of this stuff, um, stuff here. Uh, one more note about clipping planes. If you go into the, uh, the options here, diagram by layer and you scroll down to uh, clipping plane object you can see the edge thickness is at 4 let's change this to something ridiculous like 20 um, and if we're in the uh, actually our print display is not on in here so I need to do print preview oh, it is on Oh, because that was the wrong one. We're in no shadows. Um, so uh, here we go, 20. Yeah, let's apply that. You can see that your your the thickness of your cut changes there. Um, and you can't control Z that. So you got to go to options and change it to uh, 4. Or if it's too thick, you can change it to, you know, whatever. Um, but that's basically going to scale it by, by 4. Um, so, you know basically 0.43 or 0.5 0.5 or 0.45 um, and that's it uh, control P make sure that is a uh, an image file and we'll print that and let's just put this to the desktop and do test print make sure everything's good and let's go find it and there you go that's your that's your building that's your diagram